We have teachings of the prophet about how God is close to the brokenhearted. Um, God is close to the ones whose hearts are broken for his sake. Um, you know, and, and then some of the luminous examples of the Muslim tradition, people like Rumi, always tell us that uh, the wound is where the light enters you. And you look back on it and you notice that the same time that your heart was breaking open, it was actually opening. I have moved to Charlotte about 32 years ago and in America I am like for 34 plus years in America. By profession I am an interpreter and a translator. The main thing that um, I, I think was part of my compassion to work with children was running a Islamic Sunday school which I did for about 16, 17 years before I quit. And that was the most learning experience for me. Not just was that interaction with different parents and different people, mostly with the children. And this, I think the, big, the biggest achievement of my life was giving these children a sense of belonging. Recently, actually last December, my friends who were also very interested in this domestic abuse situation in the small communities like ours, especially those who do not know the language and those who cannot find a way out of their situation, cannot look, ask for counseling. So last year, this December 7, when we launched a uh, an organization for battered women of our community and by the grace of God you know we have a lot of supporters we are definitely achieve our dream our vision is to enable these women to be able to stand on their feet mostly they stay with the abuser or they tolerate all of this inhuman attitude because they are too scared to go out in the world because they think they don't know, they don't know how to work, they have no background or maybe they don't have enough education. So the idea is just to, to help them stand on their feet. So these two things, showing respect and carrying their stuff only in my heart not not saying a word to anybody else, not even pretending to know anything. That is Islam. Islam does not want us to talk about anyone unless we have to talk good. And health is a very private matter. Nobody needs to know. I would not want people to know if I am going through something. So these two things are always there. I'm from Jackson, Mississippi, okay. and uh, I went and sat with the teachers from any type of religious tradition I could find for about 10 years uh, because I'd heard Malcolm X's name mentioned in like a public enemy song in the, in the 80s, and uh, so uh, I started researching Islam, and I, I accepted Islam in 19... 98 after I'd come to Chapel Hill and then it kind of clicked in my head that that I could uh, be Muslim too. I'd never met like a, a white Muslim in Mississippi before so I knew technically you could be Muslim but I I'd, I'd just never met uh, met another uh, Muslim that looked like me so uh, and then just remembering how nice the community was here. I just loaded up my car and just moved here about 11 years ago. For me, it's been a, uh, a good way to take on some of these prophetic qualities that we, that we uh, hold in such high regard, like compassion and forgiveness and love for people. Uh, so it's been an outlet to express that, you know, to the world.
Islam is holistic, really. It addresses your mind, your body, and your soul. And you can learn how to pray. You know, it takes a few days. You can learn how to pray or the rules of fasting. And um, theology, you can, it doesn't take that long to learn kind of uh, the most helpful way to perceive what's coming at you in the world. Like we believe in one God and there's a, there's a reason for everything. But as far as uh, work improving your character, I mean, that, that seems to be the... Uh, the most important thing for me that's uh, every day you're learning something but a lot of it for me is trying to be vigilant and seeing what my intention is and checking in uh, am I am I doing something that's going to make God happy with me is God going to be pleased with this You know, in our bodies, you know, we have our DNA, which basically makes us human. And just one thing out of place can, you know, give you a deformity or, you know, horrible disease, or maybe you wouldn't even develop. And so to, for me, that was a very, like, sort of eye-opening realization of how, like, finely tuned, you know, Allah has made his creation to, you know, fit in a particular, to, progress in a particular way and how amazing it is that like we're all standing here today um, and so that's what when I think about what how I originally became interested um, in you know science and research um, coming out of high school um, I might remind myself about it you know and doing research and um, like to bring myself back to um, the sort of the brilliance of Allah's creation and that the way that he is designing things so perfectly and also the mercy of Allah that Allah has given us and that we are the majority of us are all standing here we're healthy we're happy um, I also like to use that you know use what I do to remind myself of the mercy of Allah that you know I am here I am functioning and I have these opportunities and this intellect that I've been blessed with to Give, to contribute to a body of knowledge, to contribute to society, and you know, inshallah, potentially help other people and inspire other people. So it's you know, so it's the things that I know and also the things that I don't know, and it's the things in terms of like my research and my results. It's like the things that you know work, that you know make me feel that I'm contributing to something. The things that I don't work that teach me. Um, Again, gratitude that I'm at least able to be here, that teach me patience, that teach me perseverance. In, in the good and the bad, I am grateful. Or I like to think that I'm grateful. I'm Saba, and I'm a visual artist from Raleigh, North Carolina. Yeah. I have loved art since I was a small child. It was one of my favorite things to do was to draw. Uh, my, bro my brothers both really loved playing video games, and I just, you know, I'd sit there with them and be doodling all the time. It's, much of my work has been really centered on identity, and in a lot of my work that's very visible, that Islam is part of how I define myself, and one of the identities that I'm really grappling with, especially um, as an American as well, growing up here and dealing with how these identities collide. What points do they overlap and where do they seem to clash and how can I make work that can open up that dialogue uh, for myself and potentially for others as well. I think another piece um, that's really essential is this community and as a byproduct, social justice. Um, and my first introductions to that were through through the masjid and through the community. You know, how do we stand with Palestine? How do we stand together in the face of Islamophobia and name these things and deal with them in a way that um, is honest and honors us and um, over time, I think that's that's come more and more to the forefront is, is how to talk about social justice and really striving to 
create positive change in the world, even though it is just art, is contributing to a dialogue that's happening on a lot of different levels and being a part of that movement. Connecting Islamophobia and battling against that to, you know, self-identifying as a feminist, that's something that came later, to um, really becoming more involved in activism across the board. And that process of really getting deep into um, uh, consciousness building kind of dialogue has really informed my work and taken it to new places. Um, but it's, it's something that is specific to Islam, it always has been, because that's where I'm coming from. Uh, and I'm, you know, I, I've stood by, by that throughout, and, but also something that continues to grow more and more complicated through connections to other movements and other ideas. And how do we go to those difficult places? And I think art is a wonderful vehicle for doing that. It's a, a safe space for, for these conversations. Uh, we made a um, very fundamental discovery in biochemistry and those certainly have been uh, very important in, in my career and in scientific um, field in, in general. Uh, those have been very exciting. Uh, I've been very interested in uh, women's soccer and their championships have been a great source of pleasure for me. So. Um, other than that, I'm interested in all UNC sports, including basketball. Um, so that's really uh, the highlight of my life at UNC. The important thing in science is to make a contribution where you know it's going to be in a um, scientific textbook. It's going to be around for 50 years, 100 years from now, and I believe we've done that. We work on developing new methods for treating cancers and of course there are many ways of, of treating cancer and I believe if, if we uh, achieve our goal in, in developing new methodology that will be an important contribution to the uh, scientific enterprise. We will not cure the cancer but it will be one way of uh, dealing with it and um, I will feel uh, that we, we accomplished our, our part in, in, uh, in doing that. Um, hard work, there is no shortcut. Uh, ha ha hard work, um, you really have to work hard. Uh, that's the only way to succeed in science. Yeah, I think in um, all of my positions, my fourth position as a chaplain, Hamdullah, um, at the university level, and uh, I think in all of them, I learn so much from my students every day. It's like my students are my university. I say Islam is a spiritual journey that reforms an individual and inclines them towards God, while at the same time serving God and ser worshiping God and serving His creation. And that can come in so many ways, shapes and form. There's an aspect of it, again, that's it's a worship-focused aspect. There's also um, an aspect of improving oneself to become a better person each day. I sincerely believe that Islam calls me to be more fully who I am and not to assume an entirely new identity or to appropriate, you know, the cultural trappings of a time and place that are foreign to me. I, you know, my writing and my Islam have been uh, seamlessly interconnected, and I feel like the path of my writing is also the path of my Islam. Um, and it's, my experience has been as if, you know, a veil has been lifted and I suddenly see a part of my country, you know, a, a facet of my country that was really invisible to me before. And that reveals my own ignorance. You know, I was really um, ignorant of my privilege, you know, and to see the way this country 
can treat not just Muslims, but also anyone who is an other, um, how it treats immigrants, um, has been eye-opening and um, it's been both incredibly enriching because uh, it makes, you know, I, I now feel connected to so much more of the world and I have made such beautiful friends. You know, one of the things I really fell in love with about Islam is the way it engages our heart and our intellect and the way it um, calls upon us to learn and to investigate. And I feel like this is meant to be this extraordinary adventure. Uh, treating people right, uh, living in peace, uh, a universal brotherhood, looking at mankind as one. Uh, all these things that Islam represents, uh, you know, uh, treating your parents right, uh, being kind to your neighbor, all these things, these are universal principles that uh, one doesn't necessarily have to be a, a, a formal practicing Muslim to understand. An important point is Islam supports your culture as long as your culture doesn't conflict with Islam. Oftentimes, a convert, uh, especially from the West or America, may feel some hesitation in representing their culture because they're Muslim now, and you have that pressure. But you know, there's nothing wrong with uh, you know wearing your culturally style of dress, uh, being who you are, and still being Muslim. One of the things I really value about Islam and something that I really kind of carry with me is the idea of pluralism. I really value that in Islam because I come from a family that, my immediate family is all Muslim, but I have extended family who's not. Um, I have extended family who's Catholic. And so I think the religious pluralism is kind of something that, you know, in the Quran it, it talks about, you know, no, there's no compulsion in religion. And so I think that that's really important because sometimes, you know, people may think that, oh, well, you know, there needs to be compulsion in religion or whatnot, or like if you're not doing this, like you need to be like reprimanded, which I feel like is not Islamic at all. And so I think one of those things, pluralism is something that I really enjoy or really value about the religion. Oh, yeah. I think my understanding of Islam has, or like my conception of Islam and the way that I like, not necessarily practice, but the way that I kind of conceptualize my religion and my faith has changed dramatically, um, specifically since coming to college. You know, um, I was born Muslim and so are my parents. And we, you know, pretty much grew up, I grew up in the same mosque pretty much my whole life. And so even though we were of a racial minority, for the most part, like, everybody was kind of on, I guess you could say, quote unquote, the same page in terms of like practice, like, Yes, some people maybe like, you know, did like small things that were different, but for the most part, it seemed like everything was kind of like the same. And so I just kind of, I always, invite, like the way I conceptualized Islam was very much like, oh, this is Islam, it's one, it's this one way. And so when I came to UNC and like got to really interact with so many Muslims from different backgrounds, different like, you know, just like walks of life, different cultures and stuff like that, I really saw how Islam has many different, it's a kaleidoscope, I feel like, you know, the way the light hits it, it's like kind of spreads out to different like corners of the room, but at the end of the day, it makes a beautiful picture. So with and MSA, I really try to, what we try to do, or at least what something that I tried to bring to MSA is really this idea of these are, okay, we have differences on maybe thick issues, like maybe it's rulings and whatnot, but try to capitalize and, you know, discuss a lot of the similarities. But at the same time, you know, there's there is room to discuss differences and kind of have like a healthy discussion about those differences. And you know, just because someone's different doesn't mean they're necessarily wrong. And so that's kind of like where we're coming from with that. And so that's kind of like how I try to view it. It's very much trying to open people's eyes to the differences and the many interpretations of Islam, but how they're all unique and I think beautiful and of relevance. Here at work, I'm DI. And uh, I'm, we're here on Central Piedmont Community College's campus where I'm an IT faculty. Um, but I also have a lot of other interests and the school was kind enough to help me with um, this project which we're sitting in right now called the EcoBox. And essentially it was to create a house for two people to live comfortably off-grid according to Weston standards. 
and it's still a work in progress. We've got solar panels and batteries and insulation and a lot of things going on. Um, but that led to the formation of an, an off-campus separate not-for-profit called G-Dwell and another project similar to this with a smaller container. And the idea is essentially to educate people on sustainable buildings, sustainable living, green um, housing, that sort of thing. So I've been Muslim, you know, all of my adult life and a good portion of my, my younger life. And uh, as far as the nature of how it's changed, it's, it's been interesting. I mean, I think, I think that, that religion or, or morality is almost inherently revolutionary. I mean, the idea is that we're constantly sort of falling and it's constantly trying to pull us back. I became very involved in the community through, you know, that's, that's the nature of the work. Plus, um, you know, coming from the Muslim community and uh, the things we would like to do in, in helping uh, the community and making the community a better place to live, it, just like a, it was like a hand-in-glove situation. And uh, I got, became very active in community. And so I, I really thrilled about working in community and, uh, and uh, doing things to improve community. But uh, you know, in line of, in our, in our religion, uh, one of the, the best persons is the, per the person who's most useful to humanity. And I find that this is an avenue of community work is to which I can uh, live my religion. And um, it's a very comfortable shoe and it fits. And um, so that's, that's, and I'm staying involved in the community. Muslim for Social Justice is fighting for social justice and human rights for all, irrespective of gender, color, uh, religious affiliation, sexual orientation. We are fighting for social justice for all. And we are fighting on all the current um, fights that are going on in this day. Uh, if you know, the recently North Carolina uh, Legislative General Assembly passed laws that were against teachers, against workers, uh, against women, uh, against Muslims, um, against African Americans, voting rights, uh, one of the worst voting rights, uh, suppression in the country have been passed by North Carolina, which many people think is a racist law. So we are fighting on all those fronts. We cannot be comfortable in the status quo. If we are comfortable, then we are part of the problem. So, Social justice and even our Islamic teaching on justice demands us that we stand up for justice and human rights for all. I have a t-shirt uh, that says, Muslims love Jesus too. I found that all religions of light teach the consonant values of love, honesty, kindness, charity, and, and similar values of justice and integrity, and that if we, if we all, people of all faith, can focus on those consonant values, then we can affect the world for, for good and make a better place. I have never been def in the defending position myself. I don't want to defend because I am not in a position to defend Islam. God has said that I am the defender of Islam and you are the follower of Islam. So I follow Islam and Islam in my opinion bring the message of peace and serving community and serving people is the just of Islam. Irish have gone through the same thing, uh, Jewish have gone through the same thing, Italian have gone through the same thing. So we are going through the same thing and I think inshallah we will go up as a winner. introduced it to some Muslims that were um, also at my graduate school and I started reading read Quran and I mean it, it, very quickly I like begged them to take me to Masjid with them like I, I kind of couldn't wait and, and very quickly I just I, I felt this light there that um, I could tell that that everyone else in, not just the imam, not just the person at the front, everybody else in the room had this yearning to sort of be a better person. For me, it was really important that there are specific rules. I, I really appreciate that I'm, I, I'm told to pray five times a day and that there, there is that framework and sort of, I'm a person that likes instructions and um, I guess I just, really appreciate being able to 
to work with it, like work within a guide and, um, you know, have, have those, have that structure to my day. What I really cared about was the environment. And so mm -hmm. I stayed on and did my PhD and I researched um, coal-fired power plants and the impact of mercury um, surrounding coal-fired power plants. And um, I really had a passion for that. I mean, I really, I really feel strongly about that. I feel that that is the closest you are to God is when you are outdoors and you are you are in his natural world and I I, I guess it, it saddens me like nothing else when um, our world is being polluted and and um, because I feel like we were given like the most amazing gift this this world we get to live in it, it is so beautiful and I mean it sustains everything it's amazing and I I also have this feeling that God is the just the most amazing scientist ever you know he created everything so perfectly I think it makes sense that there are a lot of scientists that are Muslim and I think it can go you know either way you know as a convert I was a scientist first and I came to Islam and I I think it's um, that they're not unrelated science and math um, you know we as a scientist I like things to be measured and perfect and I like to be able to figure them out and I feel like you know Islam sort of has that recipe like it does it gives you a way to be and things are very you know spelled out you can find a hadith for anything you know and um, so I don't think it's coincidence that um, a lot of Muslims are scientists. I also don't think that it's a coincidence that a lot of bakers used to be chemists because that, you know, that's that's what I did was atmospheric chemistry, and I think they're very very similar. You know, you have to measure everything perfectly in order to come out with a perfect outcome, and of course, you know, that's I, I don't know, it, you know, Islam embodies that too, the perfect the perfect everything. When someone asks me about Islam, I, I speak to them the way that I know that I was brought up and the way, the way that I was taught about Islam. And um, for me, compassion is a, is a big plus. Kindness to others is a big plus, regardless if they agree with you or not, regardless if they feel the way that, if they like me or not, quite honestly. This is what, in my belief, Islam is far more than just praying, it's far more than just charity. You have to have that human component where you care for everyone. You don't just care for Muslims. I'm uh, Dustin Barto. I'm the editor of Muslim American Magazine. I'm also a father and husband and hopeless geek. Uh, I grew up watching Star Trek and um, in memory of Leonard Nimoy that just passed away, I have to say that Islam is infinite diversity in infinite combinations. And I find that through the various schools of thought, I find that through the various types of individuals that come to Islam, and I find that even though we all come from different backgrounds, when we all look at the Qur'an and the Qur'an reveals itself, even though it reveals itself differently to different people, that we all fall under the umbrella as Muslims. I would want everybody to know, Muslims especially, but non-Muslims too, that Islam is not just about worship. Islam is a complete cohesive way of existence, not just a way of life, because it goes beyond life. It goes into the afterlife and then before this life. So I think that we should not fear to embrace our Islam. We shouldn't allow fear to override our faith. And we should be proud to walk around with a, a beard, with a kufi, with hijab. We should let people know. We should wear our Islam on our sleeves. Ironically, I feel that the crucible that has been the experience of being Muslim, particularly in America, particularly in the last 15 years, has actually created 
an extraordinary generation of leaders um, who, whose minds and hearts and beings are just alive and awakened and concerned about issues of justice here, and they see the connection to issues of justice globally.